Project managers and product managers are usually different roles in big organizations. But in smaller startups, project management is a big part of a product manager's day to day. Young PMs, especially APMs, are usually judged on their capability of delivering products on time and making sure that the engineers are always utterly clear on what they have to do. Hi guys, my name is Arushi and welcome to my channel. I have about 6 plus years of experience building tech products. In this 6 years, I have worked across various unicorns in India and in Dubai. Right now, I'm working as a senior product manager in Noon, which is the biggest e-commerce player in the Nina region. This video, I'll help you understand the intricacies of project management and a PM's toolkit for it. And if you have some project management experience, which you can get without any product management experience, this video will also help you articulate that well in your CV so that you are sure to get that next call. First question when we talk about project management is how does one do it? Like, you know, what is it all about? Project management is basically your ability to break down a big project into smaller chunky pieces, articulate what each of those chunky pieces is and then estimate how long each of these pieces will take. This part is just estimation where your engineer might play a bigger role. The next part is ensuring that things get delivered on time. But if the estimation is correct, why would things not get delivered on time? Well, 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 welcome to reality. A lot of times things might not get delivered on time because of the following reasons. First, your engineer was not that great at estimating and he did not estimate five other use cases that he should have. Number two, something unknown, something unexpected happened. Maybe somebody fell sick. Maybe somebody had to go take a leave. Maybe somebody left the job, left the organization which you had accounted for. And well, we did not have the effort that we expected. Number three, the requirement changed. Maybe we expected something from the market, something from the customers, but something else happened altogether. And number four, we had dependencies on someone else. They did not deliver on time and now we are delayed. So you see, I just could think of four reasons within 30 seconds and this is just me. I mean, I'm sure there are 100 other reasons why things get delayed. And if something gets delayed, it is the project manager's responsibility to do one of the two things. One, make sure that you're unblocking your team and you're making that delay as little as possible. Number two, conveying it to all stakeholders, everyone involved that there's a possible delay and discussing how to solve it. That's project management in a nutshell. Now, what is the toolkit that I mentioned earlier in the video? So the biggest toolkit that a project manager has is Agile. Question that comes to mind is, um, what is Agile? We'll go to the experts and we asked at Lashin, how do you define it? And the way they do is, Agile is an iterative approach to project management and software development that helps teams deliver value to their customers faster and with fewer headaches. Basically, instead of betting on big things, an Agile team basically releases features in small pot packets and tries to learn as soon as it can. So that's a bunch of long statements that you could have Googled too. So let me break that down a little for you. You work for Netflix and you are building the new play something feature that they have. Our engineering team has the following things to implement. Figuring out a recommendation algorithm that will figure out what to play next. Having a UX which auto plays the next thing. Measuring analytics and implementing UI. This is just four things that I could think of, but there might be multiple other things if I get into the details of this product. Now, if you were to do everything as a block, it would cause three problems. Number one, it will be very difficult for you to estimate how long it will take to deliver this product. Number two, you are dependent on a very big bang release to learn from the market and to learn if you have made any mistakes. Number three, since it will take a long time to build so many things, it will be a black box for your stakeholders and they wouldn't know if the team is really building something, if there's actual success that's happening or not. In modern product management ecosystems, we try to break down such big releases into smaller bite-sized pieces so that we can go to the market sooner and get some feedback. Plus, we can also give the team some happiness with easier, smaller consumable builds happening faster than a big chunky release. To break down the big release into smaller pieces, 
you then take bursts of action where you build out a smaller feature and then you take it to the market and learn and then come back and iterate usually the smaller time is 14 days which is called a sprint but that's not always the case you may have a sprint for a week for a day maybe three weeks maybe a month you decide according to how bite-sized a feature can be honestly guys i have been a part of sprints where we have done it a week 14 days three weeks and even a day long sprint depending on our use case so for the example that i shared maybe you'll pick up the recommendation algorithm first launch it without the ux of play something and see if your recommendation is good enough and then maybe take it to the ux of play something for me so although agile is great it has the following three limitations the first one is it depends heavily on your engineer's capability of estimating correctly and see honestly like i said earlier there are a lot of things that can go wrong because of which your estimates may go out of the window and since agile depends heavily on your engineer's ability to estimate there's a definite risk there two since we're working on small bursts of 14 day or 21 day cycles usually there's not enough time to document things and because of this it's possible that there's a probable gap in understanding between product and engineering or between engineering tech and business etc three at times it's breaking things down into smaller pieces is easier said than done it's very hard to break big bang features into smaller things which will actually be useful as well and so at times it might not even make sense to make a sprint out of a big release Oh, in a nutshell, I'd like to call out if you're in a growth scenario where you already have a baseline product and you have to improve upon it. In that case, is agile or iterative approach works best. However, if you're building a platform, if you're building something from scratch, it can't be done in an agile fashion. And maybe in that case, you'll just maybe break it down into features or components and you'll, you'll keep building each of them before you can actually take something to the market and learn from it. So depending on your use case, you can decide. But in most of your cases, product managers, as you join new organizations or when you're APMs, you'll likely be working on iterative things or maybe working as a growth product manager because working on a platform that's already built is the first thing that you'll be given. You wouldn't be expect you to build a platform from scratch on your day one. So in that case, understanding agile, understanding how project management is done in a sprint setup is super important. Now coming to a few tools that are very useful for a project manager. The first one I think it's very well known is Jira. This gives you a place where you can actually manage and visualize where each of the tasks are. So we like to create tickets in the beginning of the sprint where we just detail out whatever has to happen there. And then once you have detailed out the tickets, you add some time about how long this will take. Uh, and then finally, as the sprint progresses, you keep moving those tickets from uh, one of the buckets to the other. So the buckets could be in progress, waiting for QC, QC done, and finally on production. So that's the best tool for a project manager. Apart from this, a project manager has a various other tools that they can use, like a burn down chart, etc. If you want me to do a video on this, please comment on the section below. And I'd love to do another detailed video on various tools that project managers can use. So not just project management guys, if there's anything else that you want me to create videos on, please put it on the section below and I'll be happy to pick it up and help you in your journey to become a better product manager. So that's it for this video. If you like the content, please like and subscribe to this channel. Please comment on the section below if you have any suggestion, any comments for me. And I'll see you next time. Ta-da!